want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rukwa Kodash. Double honors to my teachers, the apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the elect. And Shalom to the 130 Yasharala, who before losing their true heritage were known as the Israelites, the same Israelites you read about in the Holy Bible. Today's lesson, I want to go in and get into a parable that the Messiah spoke when he came. This is recorded in Matthew 13 and 31. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mu a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest among the herbs and becometh a tree so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof and in this parable the Lord explains how Israel is going to be a small seed one of the smallest of all the nations right and when you look at the genealogies you see that Israel was one of the last nations to be established amongst the 18 nations of the world today right and when it did it was small it started off with just with uh, basically just Israel right Israel and his uh, uh, four wives and his 12 sons who are the 12 the 12 sons of Israel which the 12 tribes of Israel would come from these being the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Now in this parable, the Most High pointed out some of the characteristics of the mustard seed, which are the smallest seeds around. But once they grow, they actually grow into a full tree. And here's a picture, picture of a roof, just so you can get a, an idea of how big these trees can grow. But this right, and, th and the reason why the Lord used this similitude is because he knew that what Israel would eventually become right back in that day when he had come come as the Messiah we already were great in number but it, it, he knew that it would continue to grow even bigger as time grew on and to, to now and even beyond but this this uh, all came about because of the promise that the Lord gave to Abraham our forefather this is recorded in Genesis 13 and 4 when the Lord gave Abraham the promise which which uh, is gonna guarantee Abraham's seed the one that would come out of his son Israel being the 12 tribes would eventually get the rulership over heaven now this is Genesis 17 and 4 as for me behold my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee, and I will make thee exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. And this is the promise here that the Lord gave to Abraham, promising that his seed line would continue and that eventually the Lord was going to pull nations out of this man. And this also later on was passed on to his son or his grandson, Jacob. And uh, this is Genesis 35 and 10. And God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. Now Israel, when you look that word up, that means uh, Prince Israel, and El is is uh, God, right? Or or power, right? So we're the prince of the power. So the people who are the Israelites are the princes of the of the Lord of the power out there, right? That's what Israel means in Hebrew. Let me continue. And God said unto him. I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee, and kings shall come out of thy loins. 
and the land which I gave Abraham and Isaac to thee I will give it and they and to thy seed after thee will I give the land right and that seed after that goes all the way down now are the Negroes Latinos and Native Americans who just as the Lord mentioned will continue to grow or today are the Negroes Latinos and Native Indians which when you look at these people we all have a common trait that we breed a lot we have a lot of babies right so much so that they make they make jokes about this right about our family gatherings and so and, and and whatnot so it's become like a, a moniker across our uh, across our people that this is one of the things that we're known for to have a large amount of offsprings and that's because of the of the command that the Lord gave us that we would be fruitful and multiply and and this is right here is just it's a continual grow of our, of our uh, spiritual markers on us right because it tells you here in Isaiah 6 60 and 21 that where we would eventually go as a people right in population that is right because the, the so-called Edomites out, or these Edomites out here the so-called white men or so-called Caucasians they think that they're going to wipe uh, us out the Negroes Latinos and Native Americans right but they don't and they've, and they've already been trying to do it right with uh, Planned Parenthood poisons in the food putting uh, estrogen and everything so that way the men become less fertile you know causing infertility amongst the men and the women of, of, of all the world but mainly us Negroes Latinos and Native Americans right but it tells you here in Isaiah 60 and 21 that ain't gonna work because this is what's been prophesied it says thy people also shall be all righteous they shall inherit the land forever the branch of my planting the work of my hands that I may be glorified. A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. So ultimately, the Lord's going to make make us into a vast multitude of nations, right? And this and this right here comes uh, for when we are in the kingdom, right? Because we're going to be the, the leading the leading race upon the earth that are going to lead this world in righteousness right there's going to be a bunch of prosperity where, to where eventually we are going to fill up this planet we're going to get past the 7.5 billion people there are in the world because there isn't going to be war there isn't going to be famines things are going to be perfect right because we're going to have the ability and the technology to take care of everybody and also take care to take care of so that way there wouldn't be mass die-offs stuff and what this is going to eventually lead with is going to lead into to a vast population upon the earth. So much so that we're going to have to go into these other mansions, as the Lord has said, which are ultimately in, into space. The Israelites are how the earth is going to become a spacefaring civilization. And this is going to happen with NASA, not with these people who are who are. Uh, basically using the Nazi space system to, uh, to create a space um, branch of the military we're going to get up here the righteous way right we're going to be able to go into the dimensions which space exists in we're going to be able to visit these other planets right build homeland or build other lands in, on other planets you know we're going to be able to to take advantage of all this because one we're going to be having the Heavenly Father on our side and with that power we're going to be able to make what we want of uh, of, of all these mansions out in space this ultimately like I said is uh, how the word of the Lord will be spread everywhere plus it's how the Lord rids the human race of, of its degenerative seed right so-called Caucasians the seed of the devil that's corrupted us, that has caused damage on the earth. The Lord, before he lets us go into space, he has to basically draw out the seed of Satan and destroy it. 
because, and that's ultimately what the parable of the mustard seed is, right? About how vast and dominating the seed of Israel will eventually become, even though it was a small nation, and it didn't it, de- it didn't come out in the very beginning, but eventually it grew and it became bigger, and eventually will become the the total ruling power of the universe right underneath the Lord and then the Messiah then our King David and then then us so hopefully this video was edifying Akim until next time Shalom